I remember being in a classroom as a young boy and having a teacher say this. Boys and girls, today, we're going to make something for your parents. He said, we're going to take a piece of paper and some paint and we're going to make handprints. But I resisted, but I, I had an educator that was a great leader. He had high expectations for me. He walked over to my chair. He said, Roger, I want you to do the handprints with everyone else. I said, I can't do it. I'm handicapped. He said, you're not handicapped. You're my student. Yes, sir. So I placed my hands into the paint and on the paper, and I printed my name. Roger Crawford. The teacher had a great sense of humor. He said, Roger, I'm so glad you put your name on those handprints. <laughs> Remember, I fold up that piece of paper, placed it in my backpack. I, I rode the school bus home. And that afternoon, I saw my mom and dad, and I unfolded that piece of paper, and my parents placed it in the most prestigious art gallery in the world, the Crawford Refrigerator. Because it still feels good to make that refrigerator, doesn't it? I know it does in my life. I used to come home from a trip, look at the refrigerator, it's covered with the kids' stuff. You know what I did? I bought a new refrigerator. I put it out in the garage. I hang all my stuff on that. <laughs> Some years ago, I can remember feeling that my circumstances were fairly daunting. I thought I needed a new pair of hands, so I had an extreme makeover. I got the most beautiful pair of hands you've ever seen. They were perfect. Nice long fingers. Everything I had dreamed of. My first thought was, what do people do with 10 fingers? I mean, I'm poking myself in the eye and everything. But every time I wore those hands, I felt like I was wearing a mask. But my friends, I still couldn't find the courage to take my hands out of my pockets until I had a coach that said these words to me. Roger Crawford, you'll never reach higher with your hands in your pockets. I was so inspired, I got involved in track and field. I learned how to throw the javelin. Well, I have to admit to all of you, when I threw the javelin, I didn't set many records. But I'll tell you this, I certainly kept the crowd alert. <laughs> <laughs> when I was throwing the javelin, everyone was backing up. They found a doctor that changed my life. Dr. Robert Weeks, he amputated the bottom part of my left leg, then reconstructed my knee. So this morning I'm wearing an artificial leg or prosthesis. You know, when Kent introduced me this morning and I approached him, I reached out and I shook his hand. And I'm sure for a few of you in this audience, you thought, wow, this speaker that we're having this morning, the second day of this leadership conference, he's really faced quite a burden. I want you to know I really don't see it that way. In fact, when I look at my hands, I really believe they've been a wonderful gift. Because my hands remind me that no matter what circumstances I may be facing, never quit. Because my hands are a reminder to me that it took me 16 years to learn how to tie my shoes. Then somebody's got enough nerve to invent Velcro. Where was that when I was growing up? We've all heard the saying, never let success go to your head. My tennis coach, Tony Fisher, used to say this to me. Roger Crawford, never let failure go to your head. My hands have also taught me gratitude. Gratitude. Look at what my life could be. I see what my life is. I celebrate Thanksgiving every day. But my friends, the essence of my life is really not far different than your life. As leaders, part of the human experience is all of us are going to face adversity. Challenges, if you will, are inevitable. But I am convinced that defeat is optional.